Okay, so what I've got here for this one is something I think a lot of you guys haven't seen before, and that's going to be the internal anatomy of a rifle chamber. So this is from my last competition barrel, a uh, 6mm Creedmoor, just like I'm running now. Got about 1,500 rounds through this barrel before accuracy kind of started to go out on me a little bit, so I decided to cut the barrel up, take a look inside, and that gives me a chance to kind of show you guys what's going on in here too. So um, first thing we've got back here is this is the main just body taper. So whole purpose of this section is just to contain the case upon ignition, make sure the brass doesn't expand too much and you don't have case rupture, um, just to contain the explosion. Um, up here, the next section, um, this is the shoulder portion of the cartridge. So this part of the chamber is very critical because on these bottleneck type cases, um, this area controls headspace. The cartridges butt up and stop against this angle here. So if you don't know what headspace is, headspace is essentially how far the cartridge can go into the chamber from the end of the bolt. So if you have your bolt here and you have your cartridge butted up against the bolt, what happens is if your headspace is too deep, that can allow your cartridge to slide forward. So this is exaggerated. But if your cartridge slides too far forward off of your bolt, um, you're going to have ignition issues and the firing pin's not going to be able to ignite the case. So um, another thing with that also is if you do get ignition, um, but the headspace is too far, it allows a lot more room for your cartridge to expand and grow, and that can lead to a lot of um, case separation problems and overexpanding the case. So on the opposite side of that, if your headspace is too short, what that does is that essentially pull your cartridge back and it can't go as far into the barrel. So what that does is because your cartridge gets stopped before it's supposed to, the bolt can't come all the way forward to the point where it can close. So you run into issues with your bolt being able to close if your headspace is too far back. So headspace is a very tightly controlled part of the chamber. It's one of the most critical features and essentially determines how that gun is going to function if it's safe or not to shoot. So up here, after that, we go into just the neck portion. So up until here, um, all this right here is containing the brass. When we start to get into this portion, now we are getting into where it controls the bullet. So right at the start here, we have a little section called free bore. And what that is, is that is a portion that is drilled just a little bit above the bore of the rifle, about... Um, half a thousandth of an inch on some of these modern cartridges. So what that does is cut away the rifling and gives the bullet a place to go where it doesn't impact any rifling yet. And we'll kind of talk a little bit more about that in a second. And then just forward of that, you get your lead angle, and that is just the taper from your free bore to your bore diameter where the rifling starts to contact the bullet. So the reason free bore is important, and it's kind of more important on modern cartridges, is because that has a lot to do with how far out you can seat the bullet. So comparing the 6mm Creedmoor to a 243, uh, the 243 right after the neck goes straight in to the lead angle. It doesn't have any free bore. So you don't have as much room for the bullet to seat out because when the bullet is seating in here um, you do not want the bullet and it's called the ogive of the bullet the ogive of the bullet is the diameter that essentially matches the diameter of the barrel where it's going to start contacting the rifling so the more free bore you have the further that bullet can seat out without actually touching the rifling so um, back to the 6mm Creedmoor versus the 243. Said so this 6mm Creedmoor um, does have a section of free bore that the 243 does not. So that allows the use of heavier bullets because since you're constricted by diameter, um, the only way to get heavier bullets in a caliber is essentially to lengthen them. So heavier bullets mean a longer bullet. Um, longer bullet means you typically have to seat it out further to be able to fit it in the case. And so when you hear reloaders talking about loading um, to the lands, um, the lands is basically um, the rifling. So what this allows you to do 
with the extra free boards to seat the bullet out further uh, without touching the lands. So comparing this to a 243 cartridge where this has free bore and a 243 does not. If this was a 243, um, the ogive of this bullet, you can see where the portion is about full diameter, uh, somewhere around here. Um, because the 243 does not have that free bore section, it bullet would have to be seated a lot further back into the case. So with longer bullets, the further you seat it back, you start having to push the bullet back into the case, which takes up a lot of your powder room, meaning you can't load near as much powder in the bullet. So that is one of the main advantages of these modern cartridges over some of the old styles is uh, the free bore design on these has kind of been updated to allow for the use of these longer and heavier bullets. And then one other interesting thing you can see um, cutting these apart is actually the erosion of the throat. And so by that what I mean is basically every time you shoot the gun, um, that heat, pressure, and friction is having an effect on the transition point of the bullet and the rifling. So when you shoot, you're actually eroding your barrel slowly over time and pushing this transition point and where that taper starts out further. So doing some measurements on this barrel, what I found is I am getting about seven thou, seven thousandths of an inch of throat erosion um, per every hundred shots. So the reason the throat erosion is important is because when you're reloading, you typically try to tune your bullet to the barrel, and part of that is determining how far the bullet has to jump in order to reach the lands, or how far behind the engagement point of the rifling that bullet sits. Um, the distance between there and the ogive of the bullet is called the jump. So when you're precision reloading and trying to dial in your groups, um, the bullet jump and how far that bullet is off the rifling is a very critical part of it. So when that erodes and that moves, that means that the load that you had that was tuned is no longer tuned the same as it was because the barrel geometry has changed. So that is one of the reasons that I have started going to trying to find a more forgiving load that actually seat further back into the barrel. Um, kind of the typical standard uh, for a long time has been to try to load right up as close to the land as you can, or about 10 or 20 thou off the lands. Um, I've actually been going to about 80 to even 130 thousandths of an inch off the lands, meaning I've got a very large amount of bullet jump. But what I found is that is more consistent over a varying ranges of bullet jump. So when my chamber wears out, I don't lose my accuracy as fast and it's not as picky. So it may not be as precise of load as I can get out of this, but it's the more consistent over different jumps to accommodate that uh, barrel erosion, especially when you can shoot 100 bullets a day in a match, meaning you're going to get seven thousandths of an inch erosion a day. Uh, that can drastically change the effect of the bullet um, from the morning to the afternoon of the match.